Hi friends, today we are going to discuss a very important topic in neurology that is migraine. So this is important because it is the second most common type of primary headache. So what is the most common primary headache? The most common is tension type headache. In this lecture we will first discuss the intro, then the pathogenesis of migraine. What are its clinical features and how to diagnose a patient with migraine? What all treatment options are available including non-pharmacological management and management with drugs? The drugs include NSAIDs, 5-HT receptor agonist, dopamine receptor antagonist and some other options which we will we'll discuss in detail. Finally, what is the prevention of migraine? So friends, as we have discussed, Migraine is the second most common cause of primary headache after tension type headache. It is more common in females as compared to males. Now it is a episodic headache with certain features like sensitivity to light, sound and movement. Also some features like nausea and vomiting. Now when we consider the phases in migraine attack, according to the phases, the migraine can be classical or common. So the classical migraine which is seen in 20 to 25 percent cases is associated with four phases. The first phase is aura which is as we have discussed present in 20 to 25 percent cases and this migraine will be termed as classical migraine. More commonly the migraine starts with a prodrome phase also known as premonitory phase. So, the classical migraine will be having four phases and the common migraine will be having three phases. So, after premonitory phase, there is headache phase and finally there is post drone phase. Now, each phase is distinct and has sometimes very disabling symptoms. Now, migraine is often activated by its triggers. These triggers can be glare, bright light, sounds, hunger, stress, physical exertion, weather changes, menstrual cycle phases, sleep disturbances and alcohol. Now friends it is very important to note that migraineurs are particularly sensitive to environment and sensory stimuli. Now guys coming on to the pathogenesis of migraine, sensory sensitivity of migraine is particularly due to dysfunction of monoaminergic system in brain stem and hypothalamus. This is very important. Now there is also activation of trigeminal nucleus leading to release of vasoactive neuropeptide specially calcitonin gene related peptide at vascular terminals of trigeminal nerve as well as nucleus. Therefore for treatment of migraine we have now CGRP antagonist which are termed as GPANDs. Now when we consider the role of serotonin 5-HT agonist especially 5-HT 1B 1D agonist play a role in treatment of migraine. When we consider the difference between the drugs which are used for treatment these include triptans and diatans. So triptans are 5-HT, 1B, 1D selective agonist. On the other hand diatans are 5-HT, 1F agonist. Triptans will arrest signaling pathway in nociceptive pathways of trigeminovascular system as well as trigeminal nucleus. On the other hand Diatans which are now considered effective in acute migraine will target only the trigeminal nucleus and not the vascular part. So triptans will have a role in both trigeminovascular as well as trigeminal nucleus. On the other hand, diatans will only have neural targets and not vascular targets. Now what is the role of dopamine? So most migraine symptoms can be induced by dopaminergic stimulation. Therefore, in patients of migraine, there is dopamine 
receptor hypersensitivity therefore for treatment we have to use dopamine receptor antagonist so these dopamine receptor antagonists are effective therapeutic agents in patients of migraine and these are available as oral as well as parenteral preparations which can be used as an adjunct to other therapy now some cases of migraine are familial known as familial hemiplegic migraine these are due to defect in ion channels suggesting alterations in their membrane excitability so there can be three types of familial hemiplegic migraine type 1 2 and 3 so type 1 is responsible for 50 percent of all the fhm and it is due to ca pq type of voltage gated calcium channel which is known as cacna 1a on the other hand type 2 is responsible for 20 percent of all fhm and it is due to mutations in sodium potassium atps due to atp 1a2g fhm3 is due to mutation in neuronal voltage gated sodium channel due to gene scn 1a now coming on to the diagnosis and clinical features of migraine first of all a high index of suspicion is required to diagnose migraine when we consider the clinical features according to the phases of migraine attack the first phase in cases of classical migraine will be aura so it is present in 20 to 25 percent of patients and it usually is characterized by visual disturbances so there are visual disturbances in aura phase which can be in the form of flashing of lights or zigzag lines moving across the visual field now more commonly the first phase is prodrome also known as premonitory phase now this phase will usually last for few hours two days and patient can complain of one or more of the following things like yawning tiredness cognitive dysfunction mood change neck discomfort polyuria and food cravings after the premonitory symptoms there is the main headache phase which is present with its associated features like nausea photophobia phonophobia and allodynia now the final phase is post room which again lasts for few hours to a day and in this patient usually feels tired there is difficulty concentrating and mild neck discomfort now when do we define migraine as chronic there should be more than equal to eight headache episodes per month and along with this these episodes should result in more than equal to 15 days of headache per month so since migraine attacks last for 4 to 72 hours and usually more than one day so more than eight episodes should at least last for 15 days to consider it as chronic migraine now migraine is a featureful headache it is accompanied by a variety of symptoms so the most common symptom which is associated with migraine is nausea which is present in 87 percent of cases then photophobia then lightheadedness then scalp tenderness and then vomiting rarely there can be diarrhea vertigo etc so the most common symptoms associated with migraine can be nausea photophobia lightheadedness scalp tenderness and vomiting now what is acephalgic migraine this is typical aura without any headache so aura phase is present but headache phase is absent in this patient will complain of recurrent neurological symptoms often with nausea or vomiting but with little or no headache and finally we have migraine with brain brain stem aura this has predominantly brain stem symptoms like slurred speech double vision decreased consciousness etc and it was earlier known as basilar migraine so basilar migraine is now known as migraine with brain stem aura
Now before discussing the diagnostic criteria of migraine, the tension headache which is the most common cause of primary headache is also known as featureless headache. Since all these features which are associated with migraine like nausea, photophobia, vomiting etc. These are not present at all in tension headache. On the other hand, migraine can be considered as featureful headache. So, we have to differentiate these two entities as these are the most common causes of primary headache. Now, this is the simplified diagnostic criteria for migraine. So, in a patient, if we have to diagnose migraine, there should be repeated attacks of headache which should last 4 to 72 hours in patients which have normal physical examination and no other reasonable cause for the headache plus at least two of the following features like unilateral pain the migraine headache is unilateral there will be throbbing pain it should aggravate by movement and should be moderate or severe in intensity so this can be remembered by MUTA moderate to severe in intensity unilateral throbbing and aggravation by movement so at least two out of these four features should be present plus at least one of the following features should be present either nausea or vomiting and photophobia or phonophobia if at least one of these present along with two out of these four findings with all these characteristics then only we can diagnose a patient with migraine so basically the diagnosis of migraine is clinical now let's discuss the classification of migraine first of all we have migraine without aura and migraine with aura so migraine without aura is known as common migraine and migraine with aura is known as classical migraine so this classical migraine can have variety of auras first of all there can be typical aura there can be brain stem aura hemiplegic migraine is also included in migraine with aura this is a very important point and there can be retinal migraine with predominantly retinal ophthalmic symptoms so typical aura can be with headache or without headache then hemiplegic migraine can be familial as we have already discussed type 1, type 2, type 3, type 1 due to CACNA1A calcium channel, type 2 due to ATP1A2 that is sodium potassium ATPase and type 3 due to SCN1A which is neuronal voltage gated channel. Also we can have sporadic hemiplegic migraine without any genetic abnormality. Then we have discussed chronic migraine with at least 8 episodes per month lasting for more than 15 days per month. There can be complications of migraine like status migranosis if it is lasting for more than 72 hours. There can be persistent aura without any infarction. There can be infarction in migraine and migraine can lead to triggering of seizures. So, migraine aura triggered seizure. Now, when we are not able to make the clinical diagnosis of migraine, that is all the criteria are not fulfilled as we have discussed in the previous slide. This is known as probable migraine. So, probable migraine can again be without aura or with aura. Now, certain episodic syndromes can be associated with migraine like recurrent GI disturbances which include cyclical vomiting syndrome and abdominal migraine there can be association of benign paroxysmal vertigo and benign paroxysmal torticollis along with migraine now coming on to the most important part of the uh, lecture that is a treatment of migraine so we have a score which is known as midas this is migraine disability assessment score so it comprises of five questions regarding the school, work, social life, family ac activities, etc. We will inquire about last three months. So this score will inquire about last three months of the activities and according to that there are four grades of disability. 
सो ग्रेड वन इज मिनिमल और इनफ्रिक्वेंट डिसेबिलिटी विथ अ स्कोर ऑफ जीरो टू फाइव ग्रेड टू इज माइल्ड और इनफ्रिक्वेंट विथ अ स्कोर ऑफ सिक्स टू टेन ग्रेड थ्री इज मॉडरेट डिसेबिलिटी विथ अ स्कोर ऑफ इलेवन टू ट्वेंटी एंड ग्रेड फोर इज सीवियर डिसेबिलिटी ड्यू टू माइग्रेन एंड द टोटल स्कोर इज मोर देन ट्वेंटी नाउ पेशेंट एजुकेशन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट ऑफ माइग्रेन मैनेजमेंट वी हैव टू एक्सप्लेन दैम दैट माइग्रेन कैन बी मॉडिफाइड बाय लाइफ स्टाइल मॉडिफिकेशन एज वेल एज मेडिकेशन बट वी कैन नॉट कंप्लीटली रेडिकेट दिस कंडीशन सो दिस पेशेंट एजुकेशन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर देयर माइंड मेकअप नाउ अप टू एन एक्सटेंट माइग्रेन कैन बी मैनेज बाय अ वेराइटी ऑफ नॉन फार्मेकोलॉजिकल मेजर्स दीज इंक्लूड अवॉयडेंस ऑफ ट्रिगर्स इफ द पेशेंट हैज आइडेंटिफाई दीज ट्रिगर्स ऑल्सो देयर शुड बी लाइफ स्टाइल इंप्रूवमेंट लाइक पेशेंट शुड हैव हेल्दी डाइट रेगुलर एक्सरसाइज रेगुलर स्लीप पैटर्न अवॉयडेंस ऑफ एक्सेसिव कैफीन एंड एल्कोहल एंड अवॉयडेंस ऑफ एक्यूट चेंजेस इन स्ट्रेस लेवल नाउ इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट टू नोट दैट माइग्रेन पेशेंट डू नॉट एक्सपीरियंस मोर स्ट्रेस दैन द नॉर्मल पीपल द स्ट्रेस इज इक्वल इन बोथ लाइफ बट इन माइग्रेन पेशेंट्स और माइग्रेन्यूर्स देर इज ओवर रिस्पॉन्सिवनेस टू स्ट्रेस so this over responsiveness to stress is the culprit which is leading to migraine now this can be avoided by yoga meditation practicing hypnosis and conditioning with bio feedback for most patients non pharmacological treatment work very good especially with combination with pharmacological therapy now coming on to the pharmacological therapy if there is acute attack of migraine we have to use the medications so what are the formulations available so according to the severity we can use oral agents in cases of mild patients and parenteral therapy should be instituted in severe migraine now drugs which are available are nsaids that are non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs 5-HT, 1B, 1D receptor agonist, dopamine receptor antagonist, and now there are two new drug classes available, which are CGRP receptor antagonist. As we have discussed, this peptide is responsible for the pathogenesis of migraine. So the antagonists like remegapent and ubrogapent. are available as cgrp receptor antagonist also we have 5 ht 1f receptor agonist as we have discussed these are dietens which only work on the neurological targets neural targets not on vascular targets so the drug in, include lesmi dieten now in general an adequate dose of whichever agent is chosen should be used as soon as possible after the onset of attack now after giving this agent within the 60 minutes if the symptoms are returning or are not abated we will have to use either different class of drug or we have to increase the dose of the medication which we have used now let's discuss the individual drug classes in details first we will discuss the ansets so these decrease both severity as well as duration of migraine attack ansets are most effective when taken early in the migraine attack and these are less effective in moderate or severe migraine now when we consider the side effects the usual side effects of ansets are dyspepsia and gi irritation now ansets include naproxen which can be given a dose of 220 to 550 mg in bd doses ibuprofen 400 mg which can be repeated 3 to 4 hourly and diclofenac 50 mg which can be 
रिपीट इट अगेन इफ द अटैक इज नॉट सब्साइडेड ऑल्सो वी हैव सिंपल एनालजेसिक्स लाइक एस्टामिनोफेन एस्प्रिन कैफिन विच कैन बी गिवन एज टू टैबलेट्स मैक्सिमम एट टैबलेट्स पर डे नाउ कमिंग ऑन टू द सेकेंड ड्रग क्लास दैट इज फाइव एच टी वन बी वन डी रिसेप्टर एगोनिस्ट सो दिस फाइव एच टी रिसेप्टर एगोनिस्ट कैन आइदर बी नॉन सिलेक्टिव विच आर अर्गोटामीन एंड डायहाइड्रो अर्गोटामीन और देर कैन बी सिलेक्टिव फाइव एच टी वन बी वन डी एगोनिस्ट विच आर नोन एज ट्रिप्टेंस एंड वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस दैट फाइव एच टी वन एफ एगोनिस्ट आर नोन एज डाइटेंस नाउ क्लिनिकल एफिकेसी डिपेंड्स ऑन टी मैक्स नाउ वॉट इज दिस टी मैक्स दिस इज टाइम टू रीच द पी प्लाज्मा लेवल्स सो दिस टी मैक्स इज मोर इंपॉर्टेंट देन पोटेंसी टी हाफ और बायो अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ द ड्रग देर फोर फास्टर एक्टिंग एनालजेसिक्स आर मोर इफेक्टिव देन स्लोअर एक्टिंग एनालजेसिक्स इन केसेज ऑफ माइग्रेन नाउ टू बी इफेक्टिव दिस फाइव एच टी वन बी वन डी रिसेप्टर एगोने शुड बी गिवन बिफोर द प्रोडोम फेस इफ वी आर डीलिंग विद अ पेशेंट विद क्लासिकल माइग्रेन इफ द ऑर ऑफ फेज इज ओवर देन देर इज नो यूज ऑफ गिविंग दिस ड्रग्स कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेशन इंक्लूड कार्डियो वेस्कुलर एंड सेरिब्रो वेस्कुलर डिसीज नाउ वेन वी आस्क दैट वॉट आर द मोस्ट एफिकेशियस ड्रग्स इन दिस क्लास दीज आर रीजा ट्रिप्टेन एंड एली ट्रिप्टेन so most efficacious are reza triptan and eli triptan now when we consider the individual drugs in this class we have oral formulations nasal formulation as well as parenteral formulations now in oral formulation argotamine can be given it is a non selective 5ht agonist it is given along with caffeine now caffeine is added because it increases the ergotamine absorption and also affects the if increases the effect of the drug now in ergotamine non nauseating dose is given since if we are giving the nauseating dose of ergotamine which leads to nausea in patient this dose is very high and it can intensify headache rather than decreasing the headache when we consider the difference of ergotamine versus triptan so ergotamine leads to increase incidence of nausea but with a advantage that there is less headache recurrence so these are usually given in severe cases in which there is risk of recurrence of headache now nara triptan is available in 2.5 mg tablet which can be repeated after 4 hours reza triptan is available in 5 to 10 mg tablets which can be repeated after 2 hours if required suma triptan is available in 50 to 100 mg tablets which can again be repeated after 2 hours now when we consider the nasal formulations there are three drugs which have nasal formulation available these are dihydro ergotamin suma triptan and zolmi triptan so it is used in patients who require non oral dose non oral route and substantial blood levels are reached within 30 to 60 minutes efficacy on the other hand is only 50 to 60% now parenteral formulations which are fda approved for rapid relief of migraine attack are dihydroergotamine and sumatriptan so dihydroergotamine if we give by iv route the peak plasma levels reach within 3 minutes if we give by intramuscular route the peak levels reach in 30 minutes and if we give by subcutaneous route it takes 45 minutes to reach the p plasma levels on the other hand suma triptan is given in 4 to 8 mg dose by subcutaneous route and it is efficacious in 50 to 80% of patients
Now the next drug class which is dopamine receptor antagonist are available for oral administration as well as parenteral formulation. Now oral dopamine receptor antagonist can be considered as adjunctive therapy in migraine. Now drug absorption is impaired in migraine due to reduced gastric motility, GI motility and it is related to the severity of attack. It is related to the severity of attack and not the duration of attack. So, when oral NSAIDs or oral triptans fail, the addition of dopamine receptor antagonist like domperidone 10 mg or metoclopramide 10 mg should be considered to enhance the gastric absorption. Parenteral formulations can also provide significant acute relief of migraine and these Drugs include chlorpromazine, prochlorparazine, and metoclopramide. Now, what are the other options available for the acute attack of migraine? So, we can give combination of acetaminophen 325 milligram with dichlorophenazone 100 milligram and isomethaptine 65 milligram. So, this combination comes in a capsule and 1 to 2 capsules can be given for acute attack of migraine. And according to FDA, this therapy is listed in possibly effective medications of migraine. Now, opioids are modestly effective in acute treatment of migraine and this can be given by parenteral route like IV meperidine 50 to 100 milligram these opioids do not treat the underlying headache mechanism but act to alter the pain sensation also these have side effects like habituation addiction as well as craving leading to withdrawal we can also perform neuromodulation in the form of single pulse transcranial magnetic stimulation and this therapy is also FDA approved in which two pulses can be applied at the onset of attack. Also non-invasive vagal nerve stimulation is FDA approved and we can give one to two doses of 120 seconds each for the treatment of acute attack. Now coming on to the last part of this presentation that is prevention of migraine. So prevention is needed for patients who have increasing frequency of migraine attacks, attacks that are either unresponsive or poorly responsive to abortive treatments and for patients with four or more attacks per month. So more than equal to four attacks per month are candidate for preventive therapy. Now, by prevention, the brain sensitivity is modified. So, the brain will less react to the stress level. What are the FDA approved treatment? These include propanolol, timolol, sodium valproate, topiramate and single pulse transcranial magnetic stimulation. Once effective stabilization is reached in the patient, drug is continued for 6 months then slowly tapered. So prevention has not to continue lifetime. Once there is stabilization, then we give the drug for more, further more for six months and then it is slowly tapered. So for prevention of migraine, the drugs which are available include beta blockers, antidepressants, anticonvulsant, serotonergic drugs, other classes and also STMS that is single pulse transcranial magnetic stimulation. So in beta blockers we have propanolol and metoprolol. Propanolol can be used in a dose of 40 to 120, 120 mg BD and metoprolol can be used in dose of 25 to 100 mg BD. The side effects of these beta blockers include reduced energy, tiredness and postural symptoms like postural hypotension 
and these are strictly contraindicated in asthmatics. Now, antidepressants include amitriptyline, doselpin, nortriptyline, venlafaxine. The dose of amitriptyline is 10 to 75 milligram, which is given at night time. And the usual side effect of these drugs are drowsiness. Anticonvulsants which can be used are topiramate and valproate. Topiramate can be given in doses of 25 to 200 milligram per day. And valproate is given in doses of 400 to 600 milligram per BD. Serotonergic drugs include pezotifen which is given in a dose of 0.5 to 2 milligram 4 times a day and the side effect of pezotifen include weight gain and drowsiness. Other classes include plonarizin which is a calcium channel blocker. It is given 5 to 15 milligram QID and candy sartre. Now single pulse transcranial magnetic stimulation we can use 4 to 24 pulses per day and the side effects include lightheadedness, tingling and tinnitus. Now for prevention, we also have monoclonal antibodies, monoclonal antibodies which can be either targeted towards CGRP receptor. receptor. This drug is known as Arinumab or this can target against the peptide itself that is CGRP peptide. So these drug include Eptinezumab, Eptinezumab, Fremanizumab and finally Galkenizumab. So that was all for this lecture. Thank you so much guys. Thank you.